Porsche started their electrification journey with a bang with the unveiling of the Mission E concept. That later became the incredible Porsche Taycan. And now we have this, the second step on Porsche's electrification journey, the new Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. And a thing of beauty it is. It is arguably the best looking EV on sale today. This is a Porsche that's packed full of their DNA. It blends power with practicality, desirability with usability, and two things that you would never really consider with electric vehicles that rarely go hand in hand, performance with range. It's an impressive achievement, I'm sure you'll agree. At a first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking the Cross Turismo was simply a Taycan with a bigger boot. While it might share the same platform with its saloon sibling, its DNA has been altered. We've now got new wheel mounts, new strut supports, and a revised self-leveling system that are all at the heart of the major changes under its skin. It's also a physically bigger car than the Taycan. Not just taller, but longer too. Its ride height sits a staggering 20 millimeters higher than the saloon. Not that it shows, it's still sleek and sporty to look at. The only time it'll look obviously taller is when you set it into gravel mode, where it'll sit at its tallest height, 30 millimeters over the standard Taycan. The large boot increases the load area to 405 litres from 366 in the saloon, but grows the length by only 11 millimetres. It also creates the impression of more space in the rear, thanks to an extra 36 millimetres of headroom in the back. Despite all of that, overall the Taycan Cross Turismo is just 25 kilograms heavier than the Taycan Saloon. So how does that affect its performance? seen it the fact it's heavier and bigger just doesn't affect its performance in any way shape or form this car is blisteringly quick much like the Taycan Saloon we've got four models in the lineup and each one of them brings with it slightly more power and performance we start with the 4 then we have the 4S which I'm driving here we've also then got the Turbo and the Turbo S to give you an idea of performance across the range none of them are slow this 4S for example has 563 brake horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque. It's capable of a 0 to 60 sprint in just 3.9 seconds, which is bonkersly fast for a family estate. If it's not quick enough for you though, you do have the option of going for the Turbo S, which takes that 0 to 62 time down to just 2.7 seconds. They are very, very fast cars. The whole range uses the same battery, a 93.4 kilowatt battery, which are all rated on the WLTP cycle to get 280 miles of range, which is more than enough considering the average UK commute is just over 30 miles a day. With that sort of range, you wouldn't have to charge it every single night. You'd be able to just do it once or twice a week, meaning, you know, practicality-wise, you can just park it on the drive and forget about it like you would a normal car. Giving you some idea of how that range translates to real life, this morning we set off with a full battery. It had 280 miles on the dash. We've driven it uh, 65 miles this morning, bit of a power run, couple of pulls in the car as well, and we've still got 201 miles on the dash. So you can see we're pretty much on track for the claimed mileage and range, which is very, very good. But that's enough about the numbers and the figures, and you can read all about that in magazines and on blog posts and, you know, in brochures for the car. What you want to know is how does the car actually drive? And I've got to say, this is the most complete Family estate I have ever driven. In fact, I'd go as far to say as it's the best electric car I've ever driven as well. Its capabilities, the fact that it's such a broad church, it's got so many skills up its sleeve. No matter what task or challenge you throw at it, it can take it perfectly in its stride. For example, right now I've got the car set in gravel mode. When in gravel mode, the car jacks the suspension up 30 millimeters higher than its saloon sibling. But yet the car still looks low slung and sporty and I'm putting that down to the fact it's got these absolutely beautiful Taycan alloy wheels fitted. They are such a work of art. They're, they make the car absolutely beautiful to look at. Whilst on the loose stuff, the car will take advantage of its bespoke traction control system, making sure that the wheels with the most traction get most of the power, keeping you safely planted on this sort of terrain. It also feathers the throttle response to make sure that you don't, you know, plant your foot, lose complete traction and end up in the nearest ditch. But what it doesn't do is take away the element of fun. 
whilst on this sort of surface it will still provide you with an exhilarating driving experience when you want to push along. You feel it wanting to slide a little bit but at the same time it keeps you in check to ensure that you don't end up power sliding too far. It's a very very enjoyable driving mode. It's possibly this car's best trick but that's not to say it's a one trick pony and it's only built for being a fun off-road car. When we get ourselves onto more smooth roads, like the one coming up now, we can switch the car into normal mode and experience a completely different side to the Taycan Cross Turismo. And here, the car will take advantage of its air suspension and it's almost as if the car's breathing. There's only a handful of cars I've driven that have felt this comfortable and alive and able to assess the conditions. Like I say, it's almost as if the car is breathing over the road surface. It's assessing what's ahead of you and making sure it's sheltering you from any crests and bumps and uneven road surfaces. It's tremendously comfortable. The other thing I've noticed with it is how sound is just vanished into the abyss. It's as if there's no harshness or vibrations coming through into the cabin. It's, it's like we're separated from that sense of speed and urgency. The only thing we can feel in here is the slight whisper of road noise from the tyres. As I've said, there's only a handful of cars I've driven that have felt this serene and one of them was a, a Rolls Royce. So when you're doing long distance driving in this car, you know you're not going to get to the end of your journey feeling fatigued and tired. If you want to have a bit of fun with the car though, there's also two sport settings. So if we switch it round into sport mode, what we find is the car becomes a little bit more alert and a little bit more urgent. It's not as if the steering becomes tense and wants to fight you, but it becomes a little bit more eager to please. If you turn into the corners, there's a little bit more urgency with the way that it will kind of hug the lines and you can feel that torque vector in pulling you in and making sure you hug the apex of every corner. It's almost as magic has happened because this isn't a light car as we've touched on already but it feels as if the car has just gone on a slimming fast diet and it's just lost 14 stone it's such a such a weird experience going from something where it's in normal mode you can feel the car using its weight to its advantage and levering itself over every crest and crescent in the road to as i say shelter you as a driver from anything that might cause jarring discomfort whilst driving what you also find is in place of that more subdued, sensible throttle response, we have a more perfectly proportioned power delivery from the throttle. It's more of a, a shove of power rather than just that kind of gradual building of pace. The car carries speed so effortlessly and lightly that when you put it into sport mode, you don't actually sacrifice any of that comfort or poise. You just get a sense of sporting prowess, a little bit more Porsche DNA. There's also a Sport Plus driving mode, which just gives you more of that Sport mode. Things just sharpen up slightly. There is now a sense of tension through the steering. You get a bit more noise coming into the cabin piped in through the, through the speakers, that more powerful electric Porsche power noise that they give you. It's, it just makes things a little bit more engaging, a little bit more exciting to drive. It eggs you on a little bit more to, to push on. The way that it then hugs the lines and feels like the car has hunkered down more through the corners, it almost takes the Taycan Cross Turismo to the same territory that the Taycan Saloon goes into, a sporting, practical electric vehicle. It's absolutely wonderful to drive. You feel it pitching into the corners and then there's, in Sport Plus mode, any of that body roll that the car was experiencing in comfort mode or normal mode, should I say, is all but gone. There's still a little bit of it, but it's far more manageable. Like I say, the car just feels more eager, more, well, more Porsche. This is such a fun car to drive in. As I say, it's got to be the most fun electric car I've ever driven. It doesn't feel like I'm driving a large estate at all. It feels like I'm driving, especially in sport mode, a much smaller, more nimble, more agile sports car. You can really feel that Porsche DNA flowing through it. It's, 
it's making me grin from ear to ear and it's just so easy to pinpoint on the road it's so easy to place it just wants to hug every single apex and pull you through the other side and as i say in in sport mode it just wants to push you through those corners whereas when you plant it into sport plus mode it's it just livens things up dramatically and it's almost if the power goes from a push to well more of a punch <laughs> Does it matter that there's no screaming V8 under the bonnet and no pops and burbles and flames firing out of the exhaust? Does it really matter that there's no visceral screaming engine under the bonnet of this car? To me, no, not at all really, because you see this, this is a family estate that's designed for long distance cruising and traveling across continents with your family and friends. It's not an out and out sports car. It's a fun car to use and drive every single day. And it's something that needs to be practical and enjoyable at the same time whilst also providing you an enthusiastic driving DNA from Porsche and it absolutely nails that Porsche you have absolutely built a car that is all things to all people and can just be your one car to fill your dream garage it is such a masterpiece you want to leave those V8s and all that drama and theatre to your weekend toys to the likes of your Lamborghinis and your McLarens with this, it's the sort of car that when you drop the kids at school, you can drop it into Sport Plus mode and have an absolutely belting time on the way home. And my God, is it quick. <laughs> There's one other driving mode that I haven't mentioned as well, and that is range mode. In range mode, the car will encourage you to drive it more sensibly and it will limit your top speed to just 60 miles an hour. This ensures you get the absolute maximum range out of your batteries and it's ideal for things like motorway driving and if you're trying to do a very long distance and minimize the amount of times you have to stop to charge. Talking of charging, the Tycan Cross Tourism mode takes all kinds of charging cables. You've got rapid charging which will see you from 0% to about 80% charge in just under 45 minutes and you also have your, your standard charging plugs as well so if you've got yourself a house wall box fitted, plug it in overnight, about 7 hours from flat which, you know, is perfect for when you go to bed, just plug it in and you'll have a fully charged battery in the morning. The Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo is such a marvellously fluid car. The way that it can tr transition between so many different environments and driving styles and situations you might put it in. Gravel mode for when you need to get across some rough and ready terrains and then you've got sport mode and sport plus mode for when you really want to have some fun with it. This really is a car that is all things to all people. What Porsche have built here is just tremendous. It, it's got to be straight in at number one of my all time favorite cars currently on sale. This thing blows my mind. As well as being a fantastic driving car, the Taycan Cross Turismo is absolutely beautiful to look at. The Taycan Cross Turismo is, well, obviously an estate, and that's the kind of telltale sign with this particular car. But you also get new front bumpers, new rear bumpers, and this silver trim along the bottom of the doors. You also get this textured plastic around the wheel arches, which alludes to the car's off-road capabilities. You can even option it with an off-road pack, which gives you extra splitters and canards and protective plastic around the front wheels and just behind them to protect the bodywork from any rocks and stones whilst driving around on any gravel and loose surfaces. This particular car is finished in jet black metallic and it also has the optional glacier blue LED matrix headlights, which really give it a menacing look. And on top of that, the Taycan Cross Turismo also has its own personalized style alloy wheels, which as I mentioned in the driving video, give it that aggressive sporty stance despite being slightly taller than the saloon. And then when we look at the side profile of the car, as I've said, we've got this elongated roof, which gives it that estate type look. And then at the front here, we've got these air dams, which feed air along the side for reduced drag coefficiencies and increased range. It feeds air over these massive rear haunches. And it, 
these arches make the car look wider than it is tall. And that helps with this kind of low slung profile the car has. Then when you look at the rear end, we've got this signature light bar with the word Porsche emblazoned inside of it and it illuminates red when the lights are on. It looks terrific. Inside, nothing has changed over from the saloon and that isn't a bad thing. The seat position is marvellous and the layout of all the switches and screens is easily accessed by the driver and passenger and it's all built from exquisite materials. Rear seat space remains the same except the added 36mm of headroom that I mentioned earlier on and that does give the added impression of more space around the seats. Talking of the rear seats, fold them down and you take that load space from 405 litres all the way up to 1,171 litres. This particular car has the 4 plus 1 seat layout, where the middle rear seat is really only good for short trips. But what you do get is these rather shapely outer rear seats. If you're planning to use the car to carry a number of passengers around on a more regular basis, you can pick a 5 seat layout. The Taycan Cross Turismo occupies a very unique sector in the market and it occupies it very convincingly. It has such a different outlook on life to its saloon brethren. It has such a broad range of abilities and it, to me anyway, makes it the best electric car currently on sale today. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please join us again in the future. Subscribe and like this channel and make sure you leave comments below and we'll see you next time.